If you ever achieve any level of success doing anything in life or become decently well known for anything, people tend to put you in a box. And just as soon as you deviate in any way, you're gonna receive backlash. Sometimes even to the point of ridicule. This is especially true with athletes. I say it all the time, but people think if you can run fast, jump high, catch a football, etc., that those skills define who you are as a person. Rashad Mendenhall challenged this way of thinking. Rashad Mendenhall grew up in Illinois. He always approached the game of football with focus and hard work as he was super competitive. I mean, he completely dominated high school football. 10th grade, 1,300 yards, 21 TD. 11th grade, 1,800 yards. 12th, 1,400 yards. Just racking them up. Rashad Mendenhall was the top recruit in the state of Illinois, but he would also write raps, short stories, poems, you know, just be creative in your spare time. But coming up, there was never really a creative outlet that seemed like it would be lucrative for a guy like Rashad, and this really narrowed his options. This sounds really familiar. Cause I went through college like that the entire time. Like I was always torn between football, basketball, rap, all like all type of stuff like i had so many interests but my main interest was rap at the time i would i would record a song every day anyway rashad happened to also be a beast at football and he had a passion for football so hey there you go rashad decided to stay home and play for the university of illinois he didn't get off to a terribly fast start and in his first season he only ran for 218 yards as a sophomore a little bit better 604 yards five touchdowns but in 2007 they finally turned the 5'10 225 pound junior loose after that it was a wrap he ran for 1681 yards averaging 6.4 yards a carry and he put up 17 touchdowns after that season Rashad declared for the NFL and ran a 4-4-1 at the combine then combine that with 26 reps on the bench press. We all know bench press isn't the most functional football lift, but running a 4-4 and hitting 26 reps should be a pretty good indication of speed, power, combination. Thanks in large part to that, Rashad went in the first round to Pittsburgh. However, just like in college, he didn't get off to a good start. He actually struggled with fumbles in the preseason. And old Hines Ward hit it with one of the best rookie hazings that I've seen. Because not only was it funny and a little bit humiliating, it was also functional. It served a purpose. He put a football in Rashad's locker with a note taped on it. It said, take Mendenhall's ball away, get $100 from Mendenhall. So he had to take the ball with him everywhere it go. And of course, people come try to slap in, try to take, try and get that bill, you feel me? Kind of like on Remember the Titans when they had the ball that said, don't drop me. And they were tossing around, you couldn't let it hit the ground. Kind of think about it, like PD should have just had to carry that everywhere, right? Cause I mean, damn. How many feet are in a mile? <laughs> Rashad's rookie season was tough. He returned kicks and backed up fast. Willie Parker. I'm a Bengals fan, yes, of course I remember Willie Parker. But when Willie went down with an injury, Ray Lewis, no, 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 not this Ray Lewis, this Ray Lewis, put a hit on your boy, fractured his shoulder. Like, do you know how thick shoulder pads are, bro? <laughs> like, oh my God, how hard do you have to hit somebody to fracture their shoulder? And I told you he had a rough season. He missed the rest of the year, that was it. But he worked hard to come back better, more physically prepared to deal with what was happening in the NFL and of course in the AFC North. And the next time he got a chance to start, during week four of the following season, he ran for 165 yards and two touchdowns. And he went on to rush for over a thousand yards with seven touchdowns that season. But same as in high school, same as in college, when he hit that third year. That's when he really came into his own. He rushed for 1,273 yards, put up 13 TDs, nearly doubling his TD total from the year before, and helped get the Steelers to a Super Bowl appearance. Now, the Steelers lost that game, part due to a late fumble by Mendenhall, and Steelers fans are pissed in the comments. After that, Rashad would have more issues with the Steelers organization, issues with injuries. He ended up tearing his ACL the next season, missed a ton of time, came back, but then was deactivated for inconsistent play. Then he was suspended after not showing up to the next game after being deactivated. This is your job. 
you gotta show up. You can't not show up. At the same time, I do get it. It's like such a waste of my time. Are you deactivated me. Anyway, so yeah, that happened. After that, Rashad and the Steelers parted ways. Rashad Mendenhall would go on to sign with the Arizona Cardinals. He had a pretty good year, but not a great year. 687 yards, 8 touchdowns, 134 yards receiving. Solid year. Rashad was only 26, definitely had some football left in him. Nonetheless, he seemingly out of nowhere decided to retire. This is one of those weird things in sports where when a player decides to take control of, you know, their own life and like, yo, I wanna do something else. At this point, people lose their mind. One writer even dedicated a whole article about how Rashad was gonna try to make a comeback after he ran out of money. You talking about a shot? You talking about throwing shade? Sheesh. The fact that Rashad retired so young was one thing that didn't sit well with a lot of people. The reasons he gave threw people off even more. Rashad said that he wanted to travel the world and right now, like I said, I know to some people that probably sounds insane. He actually wasn't even going to announce his retirement. Wasn't interested in like a ceremonious bow out or anything like that. He said he was completely okay with just kind of fade into the black and living, living the rest of his life. He even predicted in his own words, bro. Let me read, let me read it to you. I was okay with my legacy becoming whatever happened to that dude Rashad Mendenhall. He was pretty good for a few years, then he just vanished. And here we are. <laughs> I'm so predictable. Anyway, at 26, Rashad had made his money. He was young and still had his whole life ahead of him. As we discussed at the beginning of the video, football wasn't his only passion. And while this next quote is a pretty long one, I just feel like he sums it up so perfectly, I don't want to paraphrase. I feel like I've done it all. I've been to two Super Bowls. Made a bunch of money, had a lot of success, traveled all over the country, overseas, met some really cool people, made lasting relationships, had the opportunity to give back the causes close to my heart, and I've been able to share my experiences and wisdom with my friends, family, and people all over the world. Not to mention all the fun I had with my teammates. I'm thankful that I can walk away at this time and smile over my six years in the NFL and the 17 total seasons of football dating back when I started back in Pee Wee when I was 10. These experiences are all a part of me and will remain in my heart no matter what I do or where I go. With that being said, imagine having a job where you're always on duty and can never fully relax or you just may drown. Having to fight through waves and currents of praise and criticism, but mostly hate, I can't even count how many times I've been called the N-word. There's a bold coarseness you receive from non-supporters that seem to only exist on the internet. However, even if you try to avoid these things completely, because I've tried, somehow they still reach you. If not firsthand, then through friends and loved ones who take to heart all the stuff they read and hear. I'm not a terribly sensitive person, so this stuff never really bothered me. That was until I realized that it actually had an impact on my career. Over my career, I learned that everything people say behind the computers and smartphones actually shaped the perception of you, the brand, the athlete, and the person. Go figure. If you don't know how Rashad's story ends, definitely stay tuned because it's a really good ending. But I gotta say this, man. Some people are so driven by money that they can't believe that some people will actually walk away from guaranteed money in order to pursue something that they're truly passionate about. You know, happiness, fulfillment. Nobody believes in that. They say they do, but their actions say that they don't. Rashad is a guy who loved football while he played. Wasn't the greatest back ever, had some injury issues, but all in all, had a good NFL career. He had other interests like art and literature, and he took his life in his own hands and made a decision for what he wanted to do with the rest of his years. Like, why vilify a guy or look down on a guy who didn't just take the money? He could have easily signed another contract and just got some more millions, even though his heart was no longer in football. Could have got another payday and just went through the motion. But instead, he did the honorable thing and walked away. And a lot of people said he was crazy and that he would regret it and that he would be back in a few years trying to make an NFL comeback when he ran out of bread. After he retired, he joined the Writers Guild of America and in 2015, he landed a job as a writer on the HBO hit show, Ballers, starring The Rock and Denzel's son. I'm pretty sure y'all seen. If you haven't, it's pretty dope. I'll check it out. I had no idea he was a writer on the show. I was, I rock with the show. It's a good show. But today he isn't just a writer on the show. Like, just like in high school, college, and in the NFL, in his third year writing for Ballers, he was promoted to executive story director. 
That's dope. Yeah, I'm not no quitter. Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her.